The question that our support team gets asked most often is about how to troubleshoot and solve P-delta divergence issues in RISA 3D models. In this video, we'll take a look at a workflow that can be used for a model that has P-delta issues. Now, there are two main reasons for divergences. The first is that the model is just simply unstable. The second is the model is too flexible and therefore cannot resist the applied loads in addition to the P-delta shears. In this first model here, we have pin bases or pin boundary conditions as well as releases on the beams in the X direction. Additionally, we have uh, loads applied in the X direction as well. If we open the load combination spreadsheet, we can see that we have the P-delta analysis enabled for each of the four combinations. We can go ahead and start by solving the batch and envelope to solve all the combinations at the same time. When we do this, we can see that we get a P-delta divergence error at node N4. We can also see that the solution tells us that the solution stopped during combination one. So that's where we can start to look. We need to look in combination one to see what's going on. So the first thing we can do is we can disable P-delta analysis and rerun the analysis to check and verify to make sure that the structure indeed is stable. So if we now solve this current load combination, we can see that we get this warning saying that we have an unstable model, so that instabilities were detected. Now if we click yes here, we're going to get a new model view that's going to show us the node in which the instabilities were detected. We can also use the joint reactions table to see what's happening at that particular node. So we can see at N14 that we're actually, that in order for the model to be stable, RISA has actually locked the node for rotation about the Z direction, so for moment MZ. So this tells us that we need to reduce the number of releases that impact that particular node either by adding fixed boundary conditions to the bases or by changing the beam releases to fixed. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change those uh, beam releases to fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and select only those beams and then go to modify the properties of those so that they're fully fixed. Now with everything back on, I can go back into my load combinations and the first thing I can do is just rerun this a particular load combination to ensure that the model now is truly stable. So we did that, we ran that load combination and we got no warnings. We can also see that in our joint reactions we actually have um, all the information that we expect. We didn't have anything for N14 here. We could also enable then P delta and rerun the entire solution for the batch and the envelope and we can see that we have no errors or no issues in this case and we can move on with, uh, with our, our analysis. I'm going to go ahead and switch models in order to look at uh, other ways that we can solve P-delta divergence issues. So this particular model has moment frames in both directions, so we know the structure is stable. However, when we run a batch analysis, we see that we get a P-delta divergence at one of the nodes, nodes N22. We can also see that that P-delta divergence uh, happens in solution during combination two. So if I open up the load combinations, we can see that combination two is a combination of dead load, uh, seismic load in the Z direction, as well as the live load. So next, if we go ahead and disable P delta for that current load combination and run that current load combination, we get results. We don't get any instability errors. We can also see in our joint reactions that we have all the joint reactions that we would expect. So this tells us that our model is truly stable and that really the issue that's happening is in those additional P delta shears um, that are causing that divergence. So at this point, it's important to think of P-delta failure as an elastic buckling of your model. It may be a localized buckling of one member or it may be a general buckling of the entire frame. So with this in mind, we can proceed to reduce the factor on the dead load applied in combination two. Doing this will allow us to identify the point at which the structure is near buckling. In this example, I've already set up some load combinations with reduced dead load in order to determine where the structure buckles. So I'm going to go ahead and disable our four uh, main load combinations and then go ahead and enable these two P-delta test combinations. So in this first test combination, we can see we've reduced the dead load from 1.2 times the dead load to 0.75 times the dead load. I'm going to go ahead and solve that current load combination. In this case, we see that we still get a P-delta divergence at node N22. So I'll go ahead and click OK. 
Now we could go ahead and continue to pare down the dead load until we arrive at that load combination that actually works. I've actually done this work for us already and so we can see that this load combination has a dead load of 0.525 times the dead load. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that load combination and again solve the current load combination. It takes a bit longer but what we can see is that we, we no longer get any issues but if we look at the joint deflections we can see uh, by sorting here that we have very large joint deflections in the Z direction. So what this tells us is that we need to either add stiffness to the model or restraint to the model in that Z direction. And so the quickest way to do this is simply to add uh, fixed boundary conditions to the bases. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a few different fixed boundary conditions to a few different uh, frames or bases of frames here in this model. Now with that added, I can go back into my load combinations and I'm going to go ahead and test that same P-delta test 2 that we had run the first time. Now if we look at our joint deflections again, we can see that we went down from about 100 inches to just a little under an inch and a half. We could also now disable uh, those test cases and enable that main load combination there and enable P-delta as well. And doing that, we can go ahead and run that load combination. We see that we no longer get any instabilities and we no longer get any divergences. And if we look at the joint deflections, we can see that we get a number that's much more reasonable. Now, if you have more uh, questions uh, specifically about how Risa 3D does P-delta analysis or specifically the procedure it uses, you can visit the help section in the chapter P-delta analysis to see uh, the full procedure as well as the formulas that are used to calculate the secondary shears. And as always, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact our support department at support at Thanks for watching.